Да. Уважаемые коллеги, мы готовы приступить к работе. Насколько я понимаю, все необходимые условия для того, чтобы осуществить нашу работу, приступить к нашей работе, мы имеем. Но прежде чем мы начнем этот процесс, я просил бы, ну, почему-то это требуется, выключить мобильный телефон. Switch off their mobile devices. Thank you for compliance. So we are about to start to open the uh, dissertation board meeting. It is obvious. However, may I inform you that we are having audio and video recording here and it is broadcast on the website of St. Petersburg State University. We are also having simultaneous interpretation into English. Next, I would like to inform you that according to the effective laws in Petersburg State University and Moscow State University have been granted an exceptional right to award academic degrees in Russia. This procedure in these two universities is possible only in the subject fields that are stipulated by a relevant decree issued by the Ministry of Education of the Russian Federation. A relevant decree was issued in St. Petersburg State University on September 1, 2016, so as to comply with the a decree issued by the Ministry of Education. According to the procedure, every time the composition of the dissertation board is affirmed by a relevant resolution for this dissertation board is effective according to the resolution 4251-1 April 26, 2017 and a resolution as of 4353-1, April 28, on acceptance of Tatiana Bilokolodova's dissertation for defense. May I also inform you on the fact that according to uh, provision 17, section 4 on the uh, PhD awarding procedure in St. Petersburg State University, the meeting of the dissertation board is legitimate uh, unless two-thirds or over of the appointed composition, but no less than four members are present at the meeting. This particular dissertation board includes five members, including one international member who has joined us online. I believe that Professor Biazi is here and we have audio and video contact with Professor Biazi. Yes, he is waving to us, he is saying hello and this means that the quorum is here and thus all the formal requirements are here. Say, say hello and greet my colleagues in Russia. We understand you very well and we welcome you. It is a pleasure for us to welcome you here. We, are, we hope that this meeting will be successful. Okay. Okay, so may I inform you on the procedure? This is something that has to be there according to the resolution. So the meeting should not exceed uh, two hours. So the meeting starts with a brief report of the chairman on the documents submitted by the defendant, followed by a brief report of the defendant on the findings of the research, 15 minutes maximum, questions to the defendant, 
then presentation of the reports submitted by members of the dissertation board, and this means that every member of the dissertation board will have the floor, then the defendant's replies, 15 minutes maximum, and then open discussion when every member of the audience who is not a member of the dissertation board can take the floor. May I, however, inform you that those willing to take the floor have to register in a specific list in advance. They have to indicate their name, their place of work, their position, their academic degree. So the registration list is on the first table. So next. Uh, the defendant will provide replies to the questions asked from the audience uh, to be followed by uh, a report of the research supervisor, three minutes maximum, and then five minutes break before open voting to be followed by an open voting by name and the concluding statement of the defendant two minutes maximum. So this is the agenda for today. If there are no objections to the procedure, so let's implement it. No questions? Okay. So the first uh, provision is the chairman's brief report. So today we are present at the defense uh, by Tatiana Bilokolodova. The, top, the title of the dissertation is Modern Labor Law Status of a Medical Employee and Its Features, submitted in compliance with the requirements for the candidate of law in the subject 120005, Labor Law, Labor of Social Insurance, accepted for defense as of the resolution uh, issued on April 28, 2017, the composition of the dissertation board has been approved by the resolution issued on April 26, 2017. The composition of the dissertation board is as follows. Professor Hofloff, this is me. I'm doctor of uh, law. Professor, Head of Labor Law and Law Protection Department at St. Petersburg State University, Honorary Lawyer of Russia, and I'm Chairman of the Dissertation Board. Nelly Diveyeva, Professor, Doctor of Law, Labor Law and Labor Protection Department, St. Petersburg State University, Galina Skachkova, Professor, Doctor of Law, Head of Labor Law and Labor ins Law Insurance at the Institute of uh, Government and Law at the Russian Academy of Sciences, Gennady Khnikin, Professor, Doctor of Law, Moscow State University, and our colleague, Professor Marco Biazzi, attorney and lecturer at Milan State University, docent at Luigi Bacconi University, Italy, Milan. Marco, we are welcome you. Okay, so Tatiana Vilakolodova has submitted the following documents. Application addressed to Rector Kropachev to allow the defense of her dissertation, degree certificates and a copy, report by the research supervisor. The supervisor is here, Doctor of Law, Professor of Labor Law, Department of St. Petersburg State University, Sergei Marin. List of research papers reflecting the key findings of the dissertation, including the papers, five papers published in the scientific journals a certificate on postgraduate studies and the certificate proving that Tatiana Bilokolodova has successfully passed her postgraduate exam, exams and most importantly the dissertation in Russian and in English in hard and soft copy. The dissertation is drawn according to the required standards. And lastly, the conclusion of St. Petersburg State University recommending the dissertation for defense. 
all the documents are in compliance with the procedure and thus we have we are done with the first point on the agenda therefore now I can give the floor to our defendant, Tatiana Belokolodova. Tatiana, you have 15 minutes maximum. Thank you. Good afternoon, distinguished chairman, distinguished members of the dissertation board, distinguished members of the audience. Uh, today, the reforms of of healthcare sector are highly crucial and therefore we need legal tools to ensure successful medical coverage and welfare of all Russians. Therefore, the governments have to undertake specific measures. According to Article 41 of the Russian Federation Constitution, every Russian citizen has been granted the right for health care and for health protection. And here, labor of medical staff is highly crucial. This is something that lawmakers have to be aware of, and therefore they have to implement specific measures to ensure quality of health care and medical aid because the health of a specific citizen is at stake. The quality of health care provided by members of medical staff who are employed by medical organizations depends on how successfully they comply with their duties and their labor rights. Thus, we can say that Russian labor norms have huge potential on how to improve the quality of health care because those norms have to stipulate the duties of medical professionals. Moreover, the rights and duties of medical professionals themselves are vested in these laws. And this allows us to arrive at a conclusion that medical professionals should have a specific labor and legal status that would bring together both general and specialized labor rights and duties and responsibilities that may be different depending on the position, the qualification or other circumstances. Therefore, Optimization of health care is highly relevant because it is compelled to disclose the labor and legal status of a medical pro professional and to include all specific features, both static and dynamic. This would allow to identify the advantages, the drawbacks and the gaps in labor legal tools related to medical professionals and this would allow us to enhance these tools and to ensure higher quality of health care and protection of health. Therefore, may I present the key findings of my dissertation. First, labor of a medical professional is a key tool to ensure medical coverage for all Russians. Medical professionals as a specific category related to the health protection of citizens are vested, are a specific entity that are covered by the Constitution. Therefore, medical professionals should have a specific labor and legal status. The specific legal and labor status of a medical professional is a set of labor rights, responsibilities and liabilities that are performed in the process of establishment, sustaining, uh, promotion and 
uh, termination of specific labor relations with the medical organizations. The specific labor and legal status has two dimensions, a specialized one and a unified one. The unified dimensions is a set of general, unique and equal responsibilities and rights, whereas a specialized dimension is a set of specific duties, responsibilities and rights that depend on the qualification and the position of a medical professional. Fourth, to achieve the key goal of an objective of a medical professional, which is protection of the patient's right, a medical professional has to have a number of discretion powers. This discretion is explained by the very nature of medical labor as stipulated by Article 70 of the Federal Law on Health Protection of Russian Citizens. The treating doctor has both a professional discretion which is relevant for every member of medical staff as well as a discretion to, for recruitment because to provide health care to specific patients, treating doctors instructs other medical professionals. And these uh, instructions are implemented only when they were approved by the treating doctor. Fifth, the basic classifications uh, to differentiate the legal regulation of medical uh, professionals' labor include traditional and modern uh, component. Those are closely related to their obligations and duties as well as responsibilities for their actions. The traditional aspect of labor, uh, la legal and labor status is based on the uh, specificity of medical activity such as presence of a specific objective of labor to sustain health of a patient as well as inequality between the patient and a medical professional which may generate bias towards the patient. To cope with this bias, to curb it, there has to be trust between the patient and the medical professional. The latter has to comply with moral and ethical norms. Complexity of medical labor, which includes both high risks and a creative dimension, it is a highly stressful labor as well as a hazardous one, I should say. Modern uh, features of legal and labor status of a medical professional are vested in the very type of medical activities and include cooperation of medical labor to consolidate efforts of medical professionals who have different skills, knowledge and expertise according to their specialty field. And lastly, the most important role in cooperation of medical labor is played by the legal and labor status of the uh, of the uh, clinical director of a hospital who organizes the activities of all medical staff as well as the status of a treating doctor who has been granted managerial and organizational powers to perform individual professional cooperation of medical professionals to treat a specific patient. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Tatiana. Colleagues, you have an opportunity to speak, to ask questions, if you have any. I see no questions. Everything is clear. Okay. Please, Tatiana, you can uh, take your seat. And now we proceed to the next part of the procedure, which is the official discussions uh, when official opponents, members of the dissertation board, take the floor. Well, shall we start? Professor Divieva, may I give the floor to you? Well, according to the procedure, 
first all the members of the dissertation board take the floor and then the defendant provides her response to all the questions. Distinguished colleagues, good afternoon. I'll be short and I'll try not to extend the time frame. It is no doubt that this dissertation is highly relevant because well, the defendant has already mentioned that and of course the law on health care and health protection of Russian Federation citizens allows us to solve many uh, challenging issues that we are still having in implementing the relevant law, federal law. I should say that even the, this law that has been effective as of 2011 is becoming obsolete just because healthcare, new technologies, new medical approaches to treatment are changing fastly. And therefore, legal norms uh, should stipulate the status of medical professionals as well as medical activity itself. If the status of medical professionals is not identified duly, then hardly can we speak about efficiency of medical care. This is what makes uh, medical labor highly specific. The activity of medical professionals is related to the ultimate value, which is health of citizens. This makes this the topic of the dissertation highly relevant. The dissertation has a number of crucial advantages. First and foremost, it has a very solid theoretical foundation. The dissertation is based on papers uh, by lawyers as well as philosophers, uh, medical uh, luminaries, and this allows us to uh, the def this allows the defendant to uh, have a multi-dimensional understanding of the status of a medical professional. The dissertation is highly exciting, in particular when the, dis when the defendant speaks about cooperation of medical activities and specialization, because those are questions that sometimes re generate a lot of challenges, as well as the responsibility of medical professionals. Well, who is in charge? This is the basic question. Therefore, the investigation of the legal and labor status of the treating doctor is highly relevant, as well as the status of a clinical director of a hospital who is responsible for general cooperation. Another advantage of the dissertation is extensive empirical basis. The dissertation bases on the practice of the Constitutional Court, the European Court of Human Rights, the General Jurisdiction Court of Russian Federation. Uh, and this proves the relevance and the validity of the uh, findings. Overall, the defendant has successfully delivered on the objectives and has provided an extensive analysis of legal and labor status of a medical professional. The dissertation has also an entire list of other advantages, but I'm not going to focus on that to save up time. However, I have a number of questions that I would like to ask to the defendant. Uh, those are questions for discussion. Those are not criticism. So it will be interesting for, for me to uh, know your reply. My first question is, why do you 
refer to the legal and labor status of a medical professionals and not to their legal status. It is obvious that uh, rights are something more than statute rights that are justified only by the labor agreement. These rights are versatile. They include both subjective rights that are stipulated by local acts, uh, by collective uh, agreements and acts, and the labor agreement. And therefore, my question, why is it exactly legal and labor status? Another question is as follows. Well, a lot is said about the so-called discretional powers of a medical professional. Well, it is clear uh, why are these powers there, because every individual is unique and response to treatment can be different. So, therefore, my question, what is the limit to these discretional powers? As of late, a lot has been said about the necessity to comply with treatment protocols. And therefore, my question, what is the limit when a medical professional can deviate from the treatment protocol so as, at the same time, to act legally and not to violate uh, any regulation. And lastly, my last question is about the regulator of the legal and labor status of a medical professional because approaches to treatment are always changing. Should the doctor be guided by these advanced approaches? Overall, I should say that all my questions are just a floor for discussion. Those are not criticism or disadvantages. The dissertation is highly innovative, it is practical, it is theoretically solid, and therefore the defendant deserves to be awarded the inspired degree, degree as candidate of law in a labor law, labor of social insurance. Thank you. We move on. May I now give the floor to Professor Skachkova, Galina Skachkova. I have already introduced you, distinguished colleagues. First and foremost, I would like to focus on the relevance of the topic. Of course, the implementation of the right of every Russian citizen for health care and health protection is directly related to the quality of health care. And here, medical professionals uh, are, play a crucial role. Therefore, the efficiency of labor law norms is directly related to the uh, quality of health care. Legal and labor status of medical professionals includes a set of both general and specific labor rights, obligations, duties, liabilities, responsibilities that may be different depending on the position, the specialty, the qualification, the condition of labor, and so on. It is logical that the object of research is the history, the development, and the contemporary state of a general legal status of a medical professional, as well as a legal and labor status of a medical professional. The contemporary mechanism of legal regulation in medical labor has a huge history. It has been influenced by the contemporary setting 
and the specific nature of medical labor that was different for every epoch. This dissertation is one of the groundbreaking research looking into legal, legal and labor status of a medical professional after the implementation of federal law on health protection of Russian Federation citizens introduced in November 2011. The objectives of the dissertation are adequately formulated. The defendant has accurately uh, selected the methods to analyze the findings, to present practical recommendations, and some specific solutions on how to enhance Russian Federation law in the relevant area. The defendant has analyzed an extensive uh, number of uh, rules, regulations, and acts. Uh, she has also analyzed uh, court practice, uh, judicial practices, and uh, research papers. This allowed the defendant to identify the legal and labor status of a medical professional as a specific category of labor, as well as to identify its specific properties, such as discretional powers of a treating doctor towards the patient, independence of the doctor. This allows us to uh, discriminate between the labor status of a medical professional and the labor status of other professional. I should underscore that this research is theoretically and practically relevant because its findings can be further used to study various aspects of legal relations between medical professionals and medical organizations and patients. The findings of the dissertation related to the labor status of a medical professionals will be highly useful to teach medical law in medical and legal universities. The innovative nature of the dissertation is proved by the key findings presented for defense. I'm not going to focus on those. I would like to just focus on some most striking issues that open up some floor for discussion. Those are as follows. According to the defendant, the implementation of rights and duties of medical professionals is actually stipulated by the contents of their labor activities. This allowed the defendant to say that uh, medical professionals should have a specific legal and labor status. I would like to clarify what was the defendant guided by when she looked at the uh, legal status and not the legal position of medical professionals. So I think that the same question was also asked by the first member of the dissertation board. Next, the defendant says that uh, doctors and patients are unequal and this may uh, generate some professional bias of doctors towards patients. So this bias includes the public and non-public component. The public component is related to doctors limiting the patient's freedom so as to ensure quality of health care. The key objective of such power is to ensure specific treatment and to protect the health of a specific uh, patient as well as to ensure prevention. Here the defendant refers to a relevant law when medical professionals can treat patients without their consent. Another manifestation of these powers 
is the oversight of a medical professional over patients. However, according to Article uh, to Article 37 of federal law issued on November 20, 21st of November 2011, medical uh, care is provided to Russian Federation citizens by all medical organizations according to uh, health care standards. Therefore, my questions. Will the procedure and the standards, standards of medical care limit the professional powers of a medical professional? And if yes, then to what extent? And what has to be the key a precondition to implement such limitations? Well, these questions open up a floor for discussion. Those are not criticism, and my overall impression is highly positive. Therefore, I can claim that the dissertation by Tatiana Biloka Lodova, Modern Labor Law Status of a Medical Employee and its features, complies with all the requirements uh, for dissertations submitted for the candidate of law in the subject labor law, law of social insurance, uh, whereas the defendant deserves to be awarded the aspired academic degree according to the relevant resolution issued by St. Petersburg State University number 6821-1 issued on September 1, 2016 on the PhD awarding procedure in St. Petersburg State University, whereas once again the defendant deserves to be awarded the aspired academic degree of a candidate of science in the relevant subject. Thank you. We are moving on. Well, I hope that our colleague Marco Biazzi is with us. He's not asleep. Marco, are you with us? My eyes wide open shut, but no worries, I'm here. Well, sometimes members of the dissertation board fall asleep with open eyes. Those are most experienced ones, I should say. But, uh, Professor Biazzi, the floor is yours now. Could you please provide your contribution? Uh, sure, sure, I'll give my contribution. Let me first of all um, express my sincere and deep appreciation for the discussion uh, um, by our candidate. I really, really enjoyed the discussion and I found it very uh, stimulate, stimulating, not only due to the topic, which is, of course, of vital and pivotal importance for both the public, public sector, the health is at stake, of course, but also for the relevant employees, those of the public sector. So uh, we have at least two reasons to be very uh, careful with this topic. So let me just uh, once again uh, congratulate uh, with the candidate for the very interesting and stimulating discussion. I have two ba major uh, questions that I would like to uh, address uh, to the candidate. And my question as well, as those uh, uh, provided by the colleagues uh, uh, previously before me, they are not definitely criticism, but they are just uh, uh, some question to somehow raise the debate to give some more uh, hints on uh, the debate. Uh, I would just want to stress on two main points. First of all, mm, there is something that was already mm, somehow uh, introduced and uh, discussed before by the uh, president intervention by the uh, colleagues, but I wanted to stress on special points. First of all, the limits to the discretion of the medical employee, uh, because there's a debate in Italy whether these limits uh, are more related to public law in terms of uh, protection of the patient, so these are due to the need, to the strong need to defend and preserve the health of the patients, or 
these limits to the discretion of the medical employee are more due or more related to the discipline of employment law. So in other terms, of course, they are related and they are linked to both public law, so health and uh, uh, labor law, so situation of the uh, employees. But which of the two aspects do you think um, is more relevant, is more at stake with regard to the Russian uh, regulation uh, of the uh, employees in the medical sector? So first question. Uh, of course, it's an open question. I just want to hear the point of view of the candidate uh, in, this, in this sense. I don't think there is a right answer or just uh, in uh, mm, the right answer to be given. But it's just an open question. I want, I'm pretty much uh, curious to hear the point of view of the candidate. Second uh, question is somehow not strictly related to the former. Uh, has to deal with the position of the chief physician. So mm, basically, I would like to know uh, in which legal category does this uh, chief physician fall? because this is a comparative statement by myself. In Italian labor law, we find, uh, uh, and in British labor law, in uh, US labor law as well, uh, legal classification of employees such as uh, blue collar workers, um, white collar workers, and executives, which are part of the employees, but as supervisors, they are somehow linked and bound to different rules. So is it the same with regard to the regulation uh, of the uh, Russian uh, uh, labor law in, uh, with regard to the uh, chief positions? So are they executive supervisors and therefore employees or are they just regular employees like they are, for example, uh, in the Italian legal context? This is something uh, that might be uh, stressing some very interesting uh, uh, comparative uh, notes and uh, remarks and for me this is all uh, once again thank you for the attention and i'm pretty much uh, uh, eager to know which will be the uh, answer by the candidate and once again i express my appreciation for her work and her research this is it thank you thank you very much dear colleague yes. professor biazzi dear colleague thank you well, I should extend my gratitude for such a full, such an elaborate report on the dissertation. And I also hope that we will have an opportunity to communicate not only via Skype, but in person. So I believe this will be possible in the near future. Okay, okay then we will. Good. Mutual hopes, mutual desire, this is, they are crucial. Good. Professor Hnikin, may I give the floor to you? Thank you very much for the invitation, for the opportunity to speak. Dear colleagues, my, uh, you have uh, did a, a very great job. You have done a great job, so you allow me to be very short because you have described all the advantages of the dissertation. However, may I focus on the fact that the relevance of the dissertation is undoubtful. And may I remind you that a relevant provision of the Russian Federation Constitution stipulates that the right for health care is protected by the Constitution, therefore our government wrecks their brain on how to successfully perform this uh, right, how to implement it. In 2008, the so-called uh, framework for healthcare system development in Russian Federation emerged and the key concept in this uh, document was the word low quality, low quality qualification of doctors, low payroll, and low level of healthcare organization. I looked at social, sociologic surveys done by the Russian Academy of Economy and Management 
So in 10 years, this word low was dominating. So still, we are having low payroll for medical professionals despite all the promises said by the president, low level of qualification, lack of professionalism, despite uh, significant uh, budgetary allocations into healthcare systems. So I believe that the majority of those who are here are unsatisfied with the quality of uh, health care provided today. Therefore, all these problems, all these challenges are there, and therefore I very much fancy these advantages, this modern outlook provided by Tatiana in her dissertation. In 2012, I was a member, I reviewed a similar dissertation by Madame Ivanova, but she looked at this uh, topic at a different angle. She was looking at the labor agreement for medical professionals. However, here the focus is absolutely different. The stresses are different. And this made me happy. The dissertation is also highly innovative because the defendant has successfully found the dimension that has never been investigated since 1970s. So this makes me happy as well. I believe that the conclusions and the key findings that are there in the dissertation are a, a relevant contribution into uh, labor law as a science and in uh, law implementation practices. As for the, uh, the findings, those are evidence-based. So uh, you can, uh, this is proved by the bibliography where you see just ru all rules and regulations, uh, court resolutions, both Russian and international ones. Uh, and a specific focus on the Russian law, uh, which is becoming more and more obsolete. Uh, this is something that is the key focus of the dissertation. I mean that this uh, federal law on health care and health protection dating back to 2011 is becoming obsolete as well because some norms are indeed irrelevant today and they are just becoming unclear now. And of course the uh, law implementation practices and the results are also striking. So this makes me say that I support this dissertation. The findings are highly practical, especially those related to medical labor cooperation. Yes, of course, we know that a medical professional is never alone. And family physicians that used to be there in the imperial Russia, uh, well, this system has failed, actually at the end of last century when we tried to revive it. Therefore, this uh, dimension on cooperation is what I fancy most. I, I also fancy very much the various powers of a medical professional, the organizational powers, the discretional powers, because the defendant has successfully found the accurate, the relevant words to analyze those successfully. Therefore, I have no questions as to the, uh, the findings of the dissertation. It is clear that the dissertation was a complex one, a complicated one, 
and the, dis the uh, defendant has invested many years into this dissertation and there is a lot more to follow after this dissertation because there is still some solid margin left for further discussion, for further endeavors. So I wish you, Tatiana, a lot of success, but I have some questions to you. Well, my first question is related to the limits of this cooperation. Yes, indeed, the treating doc doctor organizes treatment, but to what extent? Are there any limits to the powers of a treating doctor where those overlap with the powers of other medical professionals? in relation to the patient and to the patient's relatives. My second question is a follow-up to the first one. What are the criteria to assess the activities of a treating doctor and his professionalisms? How can we, uh, how can we stipulate these criteria in law? Well, of course, I'm not a professional in this particular topic, and I don't have some ready-made answers to these questions. But as soon as you are a professional, so I believe that I should ask uh, for your consultation here. On page 55, this is question three, the defendant speaks about uh, choosing different terminology using different terminology and she the defendant has also introduced such a term as the as healthcare professional so therefore my question why are you still using the uh, term medical employee and not healthcare employee so you suggest innovative terminology but you are not using this innovative terminology in your dissertation in the title in the contents fourth well, I believe that the defendant is too humble and she actually has not included all her key findings into the description of um, the innovative aspect of her dissertation. For example, it would be the it would be valid to include the uh, the analysis of professional discre discretion into the key findings that make the dissertation innovative. Uh, the dissertation would benefit from that largely. Or probably, well, we should look at the practices in Belarus where they have a specific center to enhance legislation. This is something that we are still lacking in Russia. So this could be a valid proposal. Five, number five. It would be wise to uh, organize, to streamline your suggestions on how to enhance modern healthcare legislation. For example, your proposal mentioned on page 95, 104, and so on and so forth. It would be wise to streamline those and to outline them in a specific set of proposals. I believe this, the optimization of healthcare system would, should include the individual, the personal opinion of the defendant on what's going on in Russia now. And lastly, there are some uh, logical discordances, uh, especially related to psychiatrists. My wife is actually a psychiatrist and I have some relatives who are psychiatrists as well. So on page 92, the defendant says that psychiatrists have, or have no right to do medical activities because they are non-medical employees. Whereas on a different page, you say they, that psychiatrists are a specific category of medical employees, so how come? And, of course, 
Some uh, phrases uh, require further, uh, further clarification, for example, internal local normative acts or the uh, medical director who is the employer or the fact that the employer uh, is uh, interested in developing uh, codes of conduct and instructions for medical professionals in the medical organization. So I think you should have chosen some different phrases here. But overall, I have a very positive impression, and the defendant deserves to be awarded with the inspired uh, academic degree of candidate of law. Thank you so much. Okay, so may I now enjoy my right of a chairman, but not over abuse it. And may I now take the floor. I was so wise, I should say, uh, giving me the floor as a last one in turn. So everything about the advantages has already been said by my colleagues. So I'm not going to speak about the uh, the, the advantages, I would say only one thing. Yes, indeed, the quality of health care today is, well, it leaves a lot to be desired, actually, because requirements are becoming stricter. And to comply with these requirements, we have to reorganize relations in this particular field and therefore as Professor Hnikin justly said laws are becoming obsolete are becoming outdated therefore it is highly important that the defendant has addressed the legal and labor status of medical professionals I believe that this is important because the defendant has justly focused on the position of her research supervisor, Professor Marvin, who defines their status as a statute rights. I mean, the rights that are provided by the government. Therefore, when we describe the status of a medical professional, we identify the contents of public policies that are vested in law. Therefore, this area of research is highly relevant and it is great that exactly these issues are the focus of this dissertation. It is obvious that first we have to identify some weaker points in lawmaking and in uh, public policies, then formulate suggestions on how to in enhance the existing legal tools. And this is what the defendant has done, actually. So here I support the opinion of my colleagues. This dissertation is in compliance with all the criteria and the requirements stipulated for this type of research. This dissertation looks into a highly relevant issue, practically relevant as well. And therefore, the defendant deserves to be awarded with the Aspired Academic Degree. As for the some questions I'll be very short because uh, quite a few questions have already been asked addressed to the defendant so I think that those would be enough well my uh, key question is how uh, morality relates to law well first on page 170, the defendant says that uh, the right for health care is vested in the Constitution and therefore we should, uh, the Constitution should provide the procedure 
on how medical professionals can report to their employer uh, about cases when their colleagues fail to provide patients with necessary treatment. This generates uh, a, a broad scope of issues uh, because, well, we know that we ha used to have an extensive practice of people being um, stool pigeons on reporting to uh, the government uh, or to the police on each other, right? So this is a very dangerous aspect, actually, I should say, which generates another legal uh, question. Who is going to be the, the judge? How can you say that the particular treatment strategy is accurate or inaccurate? So professionalism is the key value here, but how can we identify it? Uh, is non-professional behavior and non-moral behavior of a medical professional uh, equal? So are those two categories equal? I mean, non-professional behavior and non-moral behavior of a medical professional. Next. Well, the defendant says that a medical professional should have high moral and ethical values, should comply to these values and observe them. Whereas in a different page, the defendant says that such qualities of a medical professional are, can guarantee quality of medical care. And therefore, my question, well, it's of course good when doctors have observed high moral values, but how can we um, fix it formally by legal norms? How shall we assess doctors in terms of their compliance with moral and ethical values? Well, the doctor is good, he's a professional, he provides you the best treatment, but he's always grim. He never says hello, he never smiles. Is that okay or not? So this is a broad scope for discussion. I would like to have your answers to these questions. So all the five official reports have been announced, and now, well, those who are listening to the broadcasting of the meeting, those who have been unsatisfied with the reports provided by members of the dissertation board, uh, to those, may I say that all these reports have been timely downloaded to St. Petersburg University website, and if something was unclear, those can interfere, those can address this site, and everything is there. So we move on, and now I give the floor to the defendant. Please, Tatiana, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, distinguished chairman, distinguished members of the dissertation board for the questions. There are lots of them, and some of them uh, are similar, so therefore I have grouped these questions uh, by, uh, I have grouped these questions. May I start with questions by Professor Hnikin. Why uh, do I say medical? Uh, medical employee and not healthcare employee. I should say that this terminology is a standard terminology and there is some specific sense behind it. Otherwise, if I have used my innovative terminology, this would uh, generate some misunderstanding between readers. And thank you very much, Professor Knikin, for your advice to enhance the innovative dimension of my dissertation. As for your questions about the structure of the dissertation, I believe that grouping these reforms 
the way I grouped them, uh, well, I thought that this uh, way was best, but of course different approaches are possible, of course. So, as for other commentaries, well, yes, I agree that some phrasings are uh, inaccurate. So, and of course, uh, what I meant is that there is a clinical psychologist and there is a, psychiat a psychiatrist, and I should have drawn a distinction between those, of course. But of course, a psychiatrist is a medical professional, of course. As for the questions by Madam Skachkova and Diveva, why am I speaking about the uh, legal and labor status and not legal and labor position? Well, here I refer to the classical understanding of legal and labor status that implies a number of responsibilities and duties provided by the government. Therefore, the government performs a specific policy in relation to a specific category of workers. Whereas, if we speak about legal and labor position, in this case, we can arrive at, we would include the employers into this concept. So, the status should be first, and then we can also analyze the legal and labor position. As for the questions, uh, those are questions asked by Marco Biazzi, um, Professor Skachkova, Madam Diveva, on the limits to discretional powers, cooperation, limits of cooperation, and also the landmarks that the uh, treating doctor should be guided by. Well, here I should say that uh, I uh, cover the these uh, limits for discretion powers. Those are absence of specific instruction on how to treat specific patients vested in the standards. Those are uh, actions to treat this pa to offer this patient a specific treatment and the best treatment. And lastly, the qualification of a doctor. Those discretions are indirectly stipulated in the relevant law on health protection. As for the limits of the discretion asked by Marco Biazzi, here I should say that uh, this is partially in, uh, vested in a relevant regulation and instruction for psychiatrists. This is just a particular case, whereas other limits for discretion are stipulated by law, but indirectly, indirectly, we do not have a direct and explicit phrasing there. Therefore, I suggest to have it explicitly provided by law. As for the limits of discretion, those should be identified by the treating doctor depending on the disease on the condition of a patient, the urgency of treatment, and general uh, reasons of rationale and justice. Those are not stipulated by law, of course, but they should actually, I believe. This is a flaw in law. However, in every particular case, this limit can be stipulated by some local acts of the organization. As for the limits to cooperation of the treating doctor and the professional power of a medical professional, those can be limit, limited by standards and instructions and the code of conduct, as well as the condition of a patient. Therefore, doctors can violate these standards if these standards uh, contradict the interests of a patient. Well, and Marco, your question about the uh, head doctor. Well, of course, the clinical director, the head doctor of a hospital coordinates 
both minor and senior medical staff, and this is stipulated by a relevant law. I refer to the provisions and article of this law on health protection. For example, the uh, clinical director appoints the treating doctors, uh, calls the concilium of doctors, and uh, it is also stipulated by regulations issued by the Ministry of Health Care and stipulating the qualification parameters of a specific category of a medical professional and a specific position of a medical professional. As for the treating doctor, a particular case for cooperation is the possibility to call a concilium by by a treating doctor and to issue a resolution of a concilium. The resolution of a concilium is always should has to be approved by the treating doctor. Only then can this resolution be implemented to treat a particular patient. As for the questions related to the factors uh, on how to ensure the best quality of medical care and how to put together ethical and legal norms and values. Well, here I should say that the interaction between the doctor and the patient implies that the doctor is informed on the physiological and psychological condition of a patient. The doctor has to act in the interests of a patient. This is what is implied by professional behavior. However, professional behavior of a doctor implies compliance with law. Therefore, traditionally, such behavior is considered fair and faithful Whereas, as for the professionalism of a treating doctor, uh, treating doctors should also follow ethical criteria and comply with ethical values apart from being professional. So, faithful uh, medical doctors usually. Uh, so has to be professional. Those are two dimensions that are closely related. A doctor cannot be professional if he is not faithful and vice versa. A faithful doctor has to be professional. So here we should look at a specific uh, situation and the condition of a specific patient. Another issue that we are still having, unfortunately today, medical professionalism is assessed by the volume of uh, health care provided to patients. And standards do not say a word about the condition of a patient. So this is where there is a huge flaw in the uh, legislation. And lastly, the question by Professor DeVeva on professional uh, norms of behavior I believe that specific social regulators of such norms uh, cannot be uh, are influenced by the activities of a medical professional because in his or her activities the medical professional has to be guided by the interests of patient and if a specific type of treatment would relieve the condition of a patient and it is not uh, banned by law, then the medical professional can use such an innovative method. Thank you so much. Distinguished colleagues, as to the, as, uh, according to the procedure, now I open up the floor for open discussion. All those who want to say something uh, apart from the uh, members of the dissertation board, uh, so all members of the audience who are not members of the dissertation board can take the floor and say something. No one is willing to say a word. Okay, then we move on to the next uh, point on the agenda. This is the statement of the research supervisor. And may I now turn it over to Doctor of Legal Sciences, Professor Marvin. 
two minutes maximum. Distinguished chairman, distinguished colleagues, members of the dissertation board, uh, distinguished Professor Biazi. Well, now my task is uh, very simple. I support your positive assessment of Tatiana's dissertation. Well, uh, this uh, dissertation is relevant, innovative, groundbreaking, and is it has been justly said that our right for health that is protected by the Constitution compels the government to implement laws, especially in medicine. As for Tatiana's dissertation, it is the result of uh, long-term efforts. It is a solid research. I uh, support all the findings of this dissertation. As for some minor flaws, well, this is natural for any type of research. And if Tatiana has time and effort, she will uh, move on. She will continue along these lines. Thank you. Distinguished members of the dissertation board, I would like to discuss the following issue. Are we going to have a five-minute break to discuss the results and to discuss our uh, decision, final decision, or shall we not interrupt for five minutes break because all the official members of the dissertation board have provided a positive assessment of the dissertation and are actually in favor of uh, Tatiana. So I believe that, well, I don't want to be too uh, bossy, actually, but I think that there's nothing to discuss for us within these five minutes. Shall we have a five-minute break? No. Mr. Biazi? Okay, so we are unanimous in this respect. So we are going to open to vote by name. It is an open voting. So may I put on open voting the issue on whether to grant Tatiana with a spite academic degree. But before that, may I remind you that the resolution of the decision of the dissertation board is uh, considered in favor, is considered positive if um, one half of the uh, dissertation board members have voted in favor, but no less than three members of the dissertation board. So as soon as we are not having the discussion and we do not interrupt for the five-minute break, may I ask now everyone, every member of the dissertation board, to vote openly. Professor De Weaver. Uh, I'm in favor. I'm in favor. This is my vote. Thank you. Professor Skachkova, I'm in favor of, of the dissertation. I support Professor De Weaver. And the candidate deserves to be granted with this part academic degree. Professor Biazi, your vote. I join my colleagues and I'm definitely in favor of the dissertation of the candidates. So I definitely vote in favor of uh, Tatiana. Thank you very much, Professor Biazi. And me too. I'm. Oh, I forgot you, Professor Knikov. This is to you for the psychiatrist. Well, I have already voiced my position. I'm not going to change it. I'm in favor of uh, granting Tatiana this part academic degree. 
Well, as soon as the defendant has clarified her attitude to a psychiatrist, so you should be satisfied. You are satisfied. Great. Okay, thus I join my colleagues in supporting the dissertation. I'm in favor. So the uh, decision is unanimous. And this means that we have granted Tatiana the Aspite academic degree of candidate of law. So congratulations, Tatiana. So can I shake your hand? Tatiana, may I shake your hand? And then you will just uh, say a very short statement. Distinguished members of the dissertation board, thank you so much for your support, for your positive assessment of my dissertation. Uh, Professor Biazi, I'm enormously grateful to you for your time, for your participation. Uh, I also extend my gratitude to Professor Skachkova, Professor Hnikin, to Professor Diveva, to Professor Hochlov for their time, for their assessment, and for their remarks. I'm also grateful to my research supervisor, Professor Mavrin, and Professor Filipova, who were there, who supported me, and all members of my department who were constantly giving me advice, recommendations, and my colleagues, uh, Natalia, Sergei, Catherine, my family, friends, those who helped me, those who supported me, thank you all so much. Thank you. Dear colleagues, before I adjourn the dissertation board meeting, may I once again extend my gratitude to Professor Biazi, who is together with us online, and once again, may express my hope to see you, Professor Biazi, in person here. And I'm also grateful to our interpreter for uh, her input. Thank you so much. No, sure. uh, Good. Thank you, colleagues. The broadcasting is over. The dissertation meeting is adjourned. Thank you for participation. Thank you.